Hello, welcome to VMC. I'm Dr. M. Today we are going to cover chiropractic care and how it relates to veterinary medicine. So join me, you'll learn something. Recently on TikTok, there was a video of a chiropractor practicing on dog necks. Honestly, the video made me feel like vomiting. I'm not going to share it here. I'll just put up a screenshot. So let's start by covering the history of chiropractics. There was a person named Daniel David Palmer who invented it in 1895. He apparently was a tradesman or maybe a grocer who posed as a magnetic healer in Davenport. Iowa. His theory was that there were subluxations in vertebrae that were impinging on nerve flow, which would be the reason for any and every illness known to humans. He posited that having a chiropractic adjustment allowed the body to heal via something he termed innate intelligence. Today, those who practice as chiropractors don't even really agree amongst themselves on what chiropractics is. You will see a variety of different definitions out there depending on which organization you read through, but the core concept if you try to distill it down is that anatomical, biomechanical, and physiological issues can all occur because of something called vertebral subluxation complex or VSC. So chiropractic claim that treatments help to treat orthopedic pain, neurologic pain, bowel issues, immune system issues. I mean, the list goes on. And so these practitioners will adjust the subluxations to resolve them. In theory, this is meant to cure whatever is going on in that individual. So after Palmer invented this art form, there has been over a century's worth of people looking into whether this actually exists or not. And not a single person has been able to find either subluxations or innate intelligence or any nerve impingement whatsoever. Those three things that are said to be the core of chiropractics simply do not exist. While editing, I realized that my recording is not incredibly clear here. What I am meaning is that on patients chiropractors are treating, there is no evidence of vertebral subluxation complex, there's no evidence of any nerve issue, and there is no proof of the body's innate intelligence either. There are, of course, medical cases where joints do get dislocated, and that is a real thing. After you have shown it's there on imaging, you replace the bone so that everything is properly aligned again, and then you repeat the imaging to prove that you have done so. Chiropractors don't do that. Of course, there are also some medical issues that do cause nerve impingement, nerve pinching, nerve trapping. But again, those are shown and proven with imaging. And in studies where the practitioners are blinded to what the patient is going through, they do not even agree with each other on where or what the issue is. There's been over a century of investigation into chiropractic care in people. The sum of that research indicates that maybe for acute, uncomplicated lower back pain, that chiropractic adjustments may be somewhat helpful for some people. Now, there's a lot of qualifiers in there because the research doesn't even firmly conclude that. The benefit that those people noted was similar to the benefit the group of patients noted who received an educational booklet. For anything other than acute, uncomplicated lower back pain, there is no benefit at all. So let's talk about some of the very serious risks associated with chiropractic adjustments. Particularly adjustments on the neck are the most risky. People will have neck adjustments and then they will have a stroke or they will have something called arterial dissection where there's a tear in the artery. Uh, You actually know someone personally who experienced that after an adjustment and it caused severe complications. 
that dramatically change the course of their life. So the serious risk of having a chiropractic adjustment goes up to death, and this is not something to be taken lightly. And so when you have that risk of serious side effect, and you also have no proof of any benefit, that means that it is not an ethical thing to be recommending chiropractic care. The therapeutic value has not been satisfactorily demonstrated. It is firmly in the realm of pseudoscience. The other kind of trouble with chiropractors in general is that because they are already in this realm of pseudoscience, along with that, there tends to come a lot of other harmful recommendations. They are often against very life-saving measures like vaccination. They also tend to make poor nutrition recommendations a lot of the time. And the other huge problem is that when people are spending money on chiropractic adjustments, they are not seeing an actual GP, veterinarian, or specialist who can be properly diagnosing and forming a research-based and effective treatment plan for this pet. So the animal continues to go for these adjustments while their underlying issue never gets treated. This results in more suffering, more cost to the person who has the pet, and poor outcomes for the pet because of a delay in treatment. Often chiropractors present themselves as primary care practitioners to people, and that's a huge problem as they certainly are not and they have not been through medical school. Both med school and vet school do not teach chiropractic care because there is no therapeutic value that has been proven. So there are no controlled clinical studies in any vet species that I was able to find. There are occasional cases reports. There's actually also a case report where a horse ended up experiencing a stroke after a chiropractic adjustment, so the same risk that we see in people. There are some studies in horses, however, none of them are properly constructed. They're not randomized and blinded, and they don't have control groups, so any conclusions from those studies need to be carefully scrutinized, and the vast majority of them demonstrate no benefit to any chiropractic adjustment anyway. The other thing that we need to note is that this human finding of maybe having chiropractic adjustments be helpful for acute, uncomplicated lower back pain in people that cannot be extrapolated to our pets as they are on four legs, they're quadrupeds, and they weight bear very differently than us bipeds do. Their spines are very different. The weight bearing through the spine is very different. How the back functions is very different. Now, as we see in many pseudoscientific realms, there are tons and tons of emotional testimonials. There are many issues with these testimonials. Now, there's no blinding, there's no randomization, there's no controlled study, there's no peer review. In testimonials, the underlying issue is often one that is self-limiting, and so the disease process would have improved on its own or stopped progressing on its own whether the chiropractic adjustments occurred or not. These case studies also ignore how many disease processes have flares and then baseline symptomology for the patient. And if you have an animal that has a flare of any symptoms, they get a chiropractic adjustment, and then over time they return to their baseline, people will attribute that to the adjustment, but in reality, that flare would have resolved over time without the adjustment. When the person is interviewed, if they're in a time after a flare has resolved, they will attribute whatever they last did to fixing the problem, when in reality they're just between flares, nothing has been actually fixed, and this is just a normal cyclical part of the disease process that's occurring. We also need to address that there will be some placebo effect that's occurring. Humans are quite prone to placebo effect and no matter what intervention is done, if they are asked very shortly thereafter that intervention, they will almost always feel as if there has been improvement even if clinically, realistically, there hasn't been. Unfortunately, there are some veterinarians who 
take chiropractor courses and who include it in their practices because they have also fallen victim to the pseudoscience. It will happen semi-often that I will see a patient as a second opinion after they've been treated by a chiropractor for some period of time. The thing that really makes me sad about these patients is that they're real underlying issue has been undiagnosed and often those issues are painful and so this animal continues to suffer with pain that is untreated while they are having these adjustments and that delay in proper care causes harm to the quality of life for the animal. Chiropractic adjustments are also often contraindicated and can cause more harm. Prime examples of this would be if there is a disc issue in a back or a neck. If there is an adjustment done, you could cause a lot more harm with the intervertebral disc disease disease and that can really worsen the outcome for the patient. IVDD requires prompt accurate diagnosis and treatment in order to have the best outcome. I've also seen some cases where oh, there was this dog I saw and they saw another veterinarian who does some chiropractic work. They did take one x-ray of the dog's back. They didn't see anything so they proceeded to do their adjustments on this dog for a about six weeks. Finally, I saw the dog as a second opinion and I did a proper x-ray study where you take at least two orthogonal views so that you are less likely to miss an issue that's going on. And I also explained to the person that there are often disc issues that don't show up very well on x-ray and that CT or MRI imaging may be appropriate or necessary. Well, it turned out that I found a fracture in this dog's back that had been missed because on the first view, you just couldn't see it the way the fracture was aligned. So for six weeks, this dog had a broken back, was dragging its back legs around and was being subjected to these adjustments that caused a lot of pain. And the dog was also not being given any pain management because of the poor diagnostic steps that had been done. Having a diagnosis for what's going on with your pet must always be the first step. It means being thorough so that you actually know what's going on. And once you know that, then a proper treatment plan, including pain management where appropriate, can be implemented. And that will serve your animals the best, which is really what we're all trying to do, right? If I can leave you with one nugget, always do everything you can to get a diagnosis before pursuing any treatment plan. Chiropractic care does not have any valid clinical application. There is no proof that what these practitioners are claiming to do is actually happening. And there are many situations where adjustments are contraindicated and there is risk of serious harm without any fact that there might be any benefit. In one article I read, I saw a quote that said it mixes fantasy, pseudoscience, and science all together in order to sound more real and to fool people. So here's what you should do instead. First, see your GP veterinarian and if they get stumped or they don't have the tools to get a diagnosis for you about your pet, be persistent, see the appropriate specialist. Once there is a diagnosis, then follow the research-based treatment plan that will be given for you. Now, part of this treatment plan could include seeing a massage therapist, a rehab specialist, or a fitness specialist. I will link below some databases that you can use to find these sorts of people, and you can talk to your GP or your specialists about if seeing one of those people is appropriate for your pet. For example, with my dog with her elbow after her surgery, now I am working with a rehab specialist. Those exercises and that muscle building is part of her treatment plan along with appropriate pain management, things like orthopedic foam beds, uh, changing how she exercises to reduce the number of quick changes in direction she does as that's hard on her elbow, keeping her a lean body condition score. All of those things go together in order to form a comprehensive research-based treatment plan. 
And that's what you should be pursuing for your pet as well. There is an absolutely wonderful Facebook group for canine conditioning. They do post a lot of research-based best practices information. I will link that group in the video description below. I know that this topic can be a bit of a hot button one, but I wanted to cover it because there's so much misinformation that gets spread around. And there are even some veterinary professionals who have been fooled and suckered into believing this pseudoscience and so it's very important that you seek care from individuals who are offering best practices and who are not suggesting treatment plans that could be harmful without any demonstrated benefit. If you have a suggestion for what you'd like me to cover in a future video, please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you and I've also been working on improving the audio in my videos, although you may have heard my dog sleeping in this one too, for Pete's sake. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm, I'm working hard to try to minimize the other sounds that you hear, but let me know if these audio changes are better and if you have any suggestion on what I could do to improve it even further as uh, audio manipulation is incredibly new to me and I'm learning as I go and I really don't have any idea what I'm doing. If you have suggestions, I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, we'll see you in the video next week. All right, bye.